What's going on guys? So in today's video, we're gonna be going over how this JSON file right here, right, can help you build AI projects for yourself. And if you don't know much about context profiles, all we're doing is feeding this JSON file into say like ChatGPT to help it think like a, the type of software engineer I want it to be, okay? And what this will allow to do is help your, what this and what this will allow to do is help ChatGPT or again, whatever LLM you use. And what this will allow it to do is to actually design your AI projects just like how a senior engineer would at a top tech company. So this is the context profile right here and it's gonna be in the description, okay? But essentially, I kind of designed it like how I code, to be honest. So I specialize as a senior AI engineer. It's good with AI and ML pipelines, uh, RAG, vector databases, shit like that. I kind of describe my problem solving approach as well. Kind of like how I prefer like Wells to find like workflows that are like routed with LM, this like doing classification rather than like an autonomous workflow, if that makes sense. Okay. So again, the whole point of this JSON context profile is really honestly just to have it code like me. I pretty much described it like how I like to do things, how I approach system designs, how I like to code to be in general. And again, we can do then is just throw this JSON file into whatever LM you use and it will literally take on like it'll be like if that LM became this person so to show you guys the impact of this JSON file what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have GPT write two different system designs for the same exact project same exact brain dump and we're gonna see the differences with and without the actual JSON file okay so again that JSON file is this context profile right here that pretty much describes like how I like to build AI systems okay so the first one I'm gonna show you guys is without it. And, and just to give you guys context too on what project we're gonna have it build, it's, so I work at Aura, and again, this is just a made up scenario, I don't actually work at Aura, and we wanna build a customer support chatbot specifically based off our internal docs, but the, but the thing that we're worried about is the LLM accidentally providing wrong information, especially sent health info that can get us screwed like if the LLM answers from not our docs, for example, okay? Cause again, Cause again, I don't know if you guys have ever done a chatbot for a health company before, they do not wanna provide health recommendations based off of GPT's knowledge base. Because there's like a lot of like legality issues when, when it comes to providing health recommendations as a health company, especially if it's not cited or shit like that, okay? But nonetheless, this is gonna be done without context. But to give you an idea of like kind of what goes through my mind on how I would want to build this, if we're gonna be cautious about the type of outputs we're presenting to our audience, I'm gonna wanna make sure that there's hallucination checks, okay? I wanna make sure that, and again, this may be overkill, but when you're a big health company, let's say, say like Aura, I, overkill is worth, Overkill is 10 times better than a lawsuit, right? The thing I wanna see in a good system design is are we actually providing good hallucination checks, okay? So are we, let's say, are the chunks that we're providing, do they have a high similarity score with the question? Another thing will be, is there gonna be a secondary LM prompt, right? That's gonna compare the question being asked and the actual context provided and evaluate, hey, is this context actually relevant to the question and can it be used to directly answer the question like yes or no type of thing, right? Nonetheless, the key thing is gonna be providing actual hallucination checks like, and it'd be good to have both. To be honest, just doing the retrieval score check isn't gonna be enough. So that, again, when I say retrieval score, that's gonna be the, when, provide, when you're doing a chatbot, you're providing chunks into the prompt that are from your database, from your knowledge base, okay? That comes with a similarity score. If that similarity score isn't high, then obviously this may not be that relevant. Still with that, even if it was high, I still wouldn't feel that comfortable. I would feel more comfortable actually like providing, like having an LM, like evaluate, here's the context, here's the question, is this gonna be relevant on a scale of one through three and we define those, those scales of one through three. Nonetheless, kind of rambled on for a bit. Let's dive into actually like what GPT produced based off this prompt, okay? So, so excellent, let's take your brain dump into a clear structure step-by-step -step implementation. TLDR and your concern, your worry. So again, it's acknowledging the concern. Like your worry is that the LM might make things up or pull from a general knowledge base, especially for health advice as, instead of strictly using your internal docs. Okay, so this spec will enforce that, right? So high level architecture, document ingestion, so that's normal, embed them into a vector store, that's like a classic rag slash chatbot infrastructure. Uh, question answering pipeline, user asks a question, embed the question, retrieve the top K most similar chunks. Prompt the LM with only those retrieved docs to answer. Guardrails and refusal policy, if retrieval yields no significantly relevant content, the bot refuses to answer. The LM is prompted to never go outside the retrieve context, optional human fallback for unanswerable questions or edge cases escalate to human support. So again, this is like decent, but it's not to the level of like strict that it should be. And after that, it just goes into like the actual like technical details of like what one should do. But nonetheless, going back to this high level design, think of the context of this project. If you're Aura, you're a big health company, you do not want the LM to hallucinate at all costs, right? So are you gonna leave that up to chance of like the retrieval score being low, which is decently reliable. If you're, if you're, if you work in like machine learning or AI, like it's decently reliable, but not like super reliable, right? And are you gonna chance this the LLM? Like it's on that one shot when it's like, here's the question, here's the context, answer it. 
and if you can't answer it in return, I don't know. Are you gonna really chance it just only that? There's no way in hell an experienced ML engineer would ever do shit like this, okay? What it would do is kind of what I was saying. It would maybe have all this, but on top of that, maybe it have a maybe it have a second LLM call again to check for the context, check the question. Can this context actually be used to answer the question? Shit like that. Or maybe an additional thing would be is based off the inter the question coming in. Is that within scope? of the type of questions this chatbot is designed to answer. But yeah, nonetheless, let's compare the actual outputs now with this prompt, okay? So again, below is a structured JSON on the type of software engineer you are. And this is just literally just a copy and paste. I probably should have just added it as a file. But nonetheless, this is just a copy and paste of this JSON right here that I just showed you guys. And then I literally paste the same exact thing. I will provide you a brain dump on the project I want to build. And then here's the brain dump with the same exact brain dump here. And now let's compare this. So it says your brain dump suggests that you want to do a rag chatbot restricted to your internal documentation with safeguards against hallucination or answering outside policy. Uh, here's a step-by-step -step solution. So step one is just gonna be defining your internal knowledge base. That's pretty straightforward. We can skip that again. All we're looking for is like, I trust ChatGPT to be able to like give a basic system design on how to build this. This is like a basic ass project, right? What I'm checking for is, is it going to have those guardrails that we want? Is it actually going to build a system design like an experienced engineer would based off the context of this problem that we're trying to solve, okay? So again, step two, pretty straightforward, build a retrieval pipeline. Again, optional filtering, only keep results above a similarity threshold, reject results with low confidence. Kind of like what the last system design did without context, right? Uh, design the prompt template carefully. This is critical for safety. You're a support assistant for Aura, blah, blah, blah. Kind of same thing again like last time. Include guardrails in the prompt. Do not answer health-related contexts. And then look what it adds here. Implement answer guarding logic. This is where hallucination prevention gets more robust, right? The last one, the last, the last system design did not have any of this shit, okay? Like, it did not have any of that, right? This is where hallucination prevention gets more robust. It checks retrieval quality. If the retrieval similarity score is high enough, implements answer verification logic, so optional but recommended. Run a second LLM call to check if the generated answer is fully supported by the retrieved context. Given this answer, I literally was just saying this out loud like fucking two minutes ago in this video. Given this answer in this context, does the answer rely only on the context reply, respond yes or no? I would probably do like a scale of one through three. Like, does it directly answer it? Does it not directly answer it? And does, does it somewhat answer it? Shit like that. Does a good job at having context verification logic, okay? And if check fails, respond with a deflection slash safe fallback. And step five, look at this. Define health policies for sensitive content, especially for health info. Tag sensitive content in your docs so or mark anything health related. Classify user questions coming in. Add a classifier step detect if the user's questions about health or diagnosis. Adjust prompt and policy for, for health questions include even stricter reviews rules. Because of the context we provided, again, that's just how I build AI systems, right? I'm, a, I'm, I'm significantly more strict about hallucinations. That's just kind of like my shit that I, that's just kind of like how I was taught to build shit. ChatGPT now took that into its context when building the system design and understood that, hey, like we cannot have hallucinations, right? So now it added a step that I didn't even think about. But yeah, nonetheless, it is providing extra steps to again, further prevent hallucinations. And after that, it just goes into some logging and UI shit and infrastructure. And then also it adds there again, it add, this, I don't think this last one had it, is did it have actually anything about edge cases here? Uh, I can just do a control find. So again, it just kind of says for unanswerable queries or edge cases, escalate to human support, but like what the fuck? It doesn't give an actual like, what are edge cases in this scenario, right? Going back to the one with context, okay? It's bonus, edge cases consider user asks about a topic outside of your docs, right? Because that is a common thing that people do. If you talk to engineers, they a lot of times with chatbots, they want to have an evaluation step if the question is in scope of what this chatbot is designed to answer or not, okay? And if it's not, then we just return a fallback message, for example. Or if user asks for health diagnosis or advice, Docs are ambiguous or contradictory. Uh, retrieval retrieval fails or returns low similarity. Plan for these explicitly in your design. Okay, maybe I would have liked to include some of this shit in the actual design set of like bonuses, but nonetheless, it at least mentions it, and it only does that because it has context. And again, this doesn't apply to just like having an AI like help you build a system design, having you code for you. It's about just using AI systems in general. Again, I said this on so many videos, but when working with AI, the name of the game is providing the right context at the right time. Nonetheless, these JSON context profiles, and again, you, and again, you can write your own up for whatever thing you're trying to do. It could be like copywriting, uh, writing Facebook ad scripts, I don't know, right? But you can write your own version of how you like to do shit, put it into the model, and they can write scripts just like you. Again, it's just a nice structured way to provide context to the LLM so that it kind of just thinks how you want it to think. But you guys, that is pretty much the end of this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it, and I hope the main fucking takeaway you guys get from this video is a providing content, is providing good context to the AI models that you use, okay? But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much and have a great day.